Um, last season, obviously, you won a million trophies with Celtic. Last year was very, very difficult. Yeah. And you talk about being on the bench a little bit. Um, was that difficult? And did you need... Are you talking about you kind of needed to move on from that? I mean, it's a club you've been at for 14, 15 years, whatever. I, I love the club and yeah. I love everyone there. I had yeah. some fantastic times and stuff like that, but all good things come to an end eventually. And as I say, you don't want to overstay your welcome. I've seen players at teams and just stay about and part and parcel and stuff like that, that you know they're there, but they're only there just because of their name and that. And I never really wanted to be one of them. I always wanted to be the player that was playing on the park, that was involved, that put up a challenge, and even though the lads are 15, 16 years younger than me, can I run as much, can I work as hard, can I make sure that I'm staying fresh, staying fit, and playing playing just as well as what they can. And until that time comes then, but still even last season, I felt like I could do that. Uh, I enjoyed it, and uh, there's always gonna be a time, especially at Celtic, that you're going to go on the bench, you play too many games, you're getting that little bit older and that. It happens to everybody. So when I was going on the bench, I was always thinking what else I can be doing and my wee brain works overtime now and then and it takes a lot for it to work overtime, but it does. And uh, I was always looking to see what was next and for me, I, I knew at the start of the season that it was make or break. I won the 10 or I left. And then I seen Peter leaving. I seen Lenny leaving. And it's two people that I've gotten really well with yeah. and I understood and I had a lot of love for as well and still keep in contact with them now. And to see two people that you've worked alongside for years especially, especially Peter as well, uh, for them to go and then it was just probably the right time. So, so everyone the club could have a fresh start, new manager and new captain and new players coming in and it just cleared everyone out and sometimes it's, it's good to get the old out and bring in the new. So for me, I didn't want to be the one that stayed. And yesterday I watched the famous clip um, with you and Cosgrove. <laughs> I mean... The shorts were a bit tight. The, short, the shorts were a bit tight. <laughs> uh, it's, just a, it's just a classic. Tell me about, about that. And was that your reaction to the tackle? Obviously he got a red card for it, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, your reaction, was your reaction to the tackle or was the crowd going nuts? What was it? Or was it just something you did without thinking about it? Because it's very funny. I just tried to get in people's head. And it was a young lad who came on for Aberdeen. I think it was his debut as well. <laughs> so he was a big lad too. So I thought, right, we need to try and get to him. Someone to be, I think I've taken a bad touch at the time. So I've taken a bad touch, tried to move the ball quite quick. And he's just plunged at me. And nowhere near the ball. <laughs> He smashed, but all the crowd just cheered. And I was like, all right, yeah. And then I got the ball smacked off the back of my head from... What's his name? Logan or whatever he was. Shea Logan, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he smacked the ball off the back of my head and then done a runner as he usually does. <laughs> and then uh, all the crowd were cheering and I was like, oh well, back up, here we go again, nice and fresh. <laughs> and it's just something I do. I get hit, I get back up, I go again. And I, I've always enjoyed the bit of banter between the fans, myself, other players as well. And I enjoy the fight, I enjoy winning games, I enjoy trying to dominate my opponent, trying to outsmart them, mm. outplay them and outrun them as well. And it's something that I've always done. I know I'm not getting any younger, the outrunning part's getting extremely hard. <laughs> but that's when we've got a, a very young team as well, here as well. So they, they work extremely hard for me <laughs> as well. And I've got no love to go forward. So yeah. people like Fergie, Teddy, you've got Dean Campbell, we've got Ojo as well, that's been brilliant. You've got Johnny that ought to go forward, yeah. create chances, score goals. Plenty fill, going forward. Fill their boots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a crack me, on, lads. Me and Andy will stay at the back, <laughs> lads. <laughs> uh, so it's a, it's a good combination to have. We've got a little bit of experience in. You've got down the middle, you've got Joe, you've got Andy, you've got myself that's a little bit older. And then everywhere else, we've got like young, we've got legs, we've got quality as well. So the, the managers try to bring the good people into the group. You, you've got to remember football's only 15, 16, 17 years until you retire, so you need to try and make the, the most of your ability. And the young kids that are coming through, I always try and keep telling them, it, it ends very, very quickly, and then you become a, a hybrid, and you're here to five, six o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, that, the psychology of that moment with Cosgrove, when you got up and you made fun of them, I'm very interested in that. I would imagine if you got up and went for him, 
he would feel as if he won that. Yeah. But the fact that you laughed at it, he would have felt even worse. I'm learning. <laughs> I've learned. I think a few years before that, I would have probably tried to run for him and tried to be the big man and then run down the tunnel. But, uh, <laughs> no, it's just learning. It's, there's no point me trying to get set. He's, he's got a red card. There's no point me trying to get in his face and start. I've already won that battle, so I've gone to the next one. But I've had some good running battles as well. I had really? Barry Robson here as well, who played with me at Celtic too. We had some great did you have a big, did you have a big, did you have a big bust up with him, did you? Just just in the game, just right. just yeah. fights, scraps, everything. Then after the game, the two years of like high five, Niall McGinn got me sent off here. Still bring that up to him. <laughs> so that it's good to have you always play to win. Yeah. No matter what. You play to win. You play for well, whether I was at Celtic, whether I'm at Aberdeen, whether I was at Hibs, I played to win. Mm. Couldn't care who I was playing against. If it was my best mate, worst enemy. I wanted to get the best of them. Yeah. And I think that's the way everyone should be. Football's 90 minutes long. After that, well done, fair dues. We fought each other on the park, but after that, down the tunnel, that's you done and dusty. But for that 90 minutes, everyone should have that focus, have that drive to go and win the game no matter what. Yeah. Oh, you said, I wanted a new challenge. I wanted to prove everybody wrong. Like, you don't have anything to prove. You've won a million trophies. You've uh, always got points to prove to everyone. To who, though? Is it to the fans here, to the yourself? Yeah. I think more to myself. But I, I think it's about understanding your body as well. Mm. For me, running's not a problem. Right. Running's fine, I enjoy running, I enjoy working hard. Everyone now that's coming through, all the young lads are starting to understand this is the way forward. Football is 88 minutes without the ball. Yeah. So you need to make sure you run hard, you work hard for the others. And that two minutes you run the ball, that's when you can influence the game. So I think that that's where I've kind of looked after myself a little bit better and understood. And that's probably since Brendan came in mm. and got that whole focus on diet, make sure you work hard, you stay lean, you stay in control of yourself as well. And you can go and enjoy yourself, that's not a problem, but you do that in, in the right times and stuff like that. And, and now I'm no longer playing with Scotland, so mm. you get the international breaks off to go, chill, relax, do whatever you want, go play golf, go drink, do whatever you want to do, but then you come back, you make sure you're ready to go mm. again because you've got another solid month or two months of football. And well, you talk about Brendan. Yep. Uh, obviously a huge influence yeah. on you. You've had, you've had many managers and coaches, but Brendan is right up there. Um, if Brendan had never arrived at Celtic and had, had the influence he had on you, what do you think would have happened to you? I'd have probably retired. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a wee bit earlier. Really? Yeah, I think the way... Ronnie and stuff was and the way football was going at the time it wasn't great Brendan was a breath of fresh air to everyone and the fans knew that mm. I think everyone at the club as soon as you, he walked in you were like this guy is proper and you're like right we're either going to be unbelievable or this is going to be terrible and I was like right and to be fair and Brendan Bren pulled me before anybody mm. at, at the club and I went down to London, met him, sat him down, he asked what was wrong with the club. I was like, we don't work hard enough in training, lads aren't fit enough. And he was like, that'll not be happening. I was like, all right, I like this already. <laughs> then he was showing me his, how he was going to build up training. He started getting all his notes out and going through what he'd done at Liverpool, how he got the best out of them and how he kept pushing them no matter what. So I was like, Jesus, here we go. This is, this is how things work. So he was going deep with that and just asked how long I could play for and I was like, oh, I think I was maybe, well, 29, 30 at the time. So I was like, I've probably another year or two. And he was like, we'll see. Mm. I was like, all right, yeah. And I was like, well, injuries, you know what it's like, your body slowly falling to bits and you might find somebody else. So yeah, my, my first game for Brendan, I started left wing. <laughs> you know, in a friendly game and, and he's went, oh, bro, just go in there. And I, I just, I was injured before coming back, so I was playing catch up to all the lads. So, I uh, had three, four weeks behind, so I went on the park for 15, 20 minutes and started left wing. I was like looking, going, What am I doing here? <laughs> I was like, I, re I remember I used to be a tricky winger at Hibs, but on the left hand side, he was like, I just want you to cut in and play in the area and just make it like get the overload in the middle of the park. And I was like, Yeah, I could do that. So I automatically just drifted into the middle of the park, kept drifting in, and he was like, Right, we're gathering, we're not going to start yet. You're just going to start here the next game, okay? <laughs> so, it, creature it, of heaven. Yeah, he was, he was quite good in how he done it, and he was like, I don't want you sprinting here, there, everywhere. He went, I know you can run. He went, You don't have to prove to me that you can run. 
He went, that's not the problem. He went, it's discipline, understanding the game, mm. working on uh, where you should be, understanding who the ball can go, understanding when you've got space, when you need to fuck it on. I was like, right, and he just started showing you videos, working hard and training, how he done stuff at Liverpool, how he done stuff at Swansea, and he talked to you all through different ways, means that we wanted to play football, and it wasn't one shape fitted us, it was he could put anybody in a team mm. and we could work around that shape to bring the better where they've had four strikers in the park we can somehow merge it into a 4-2-3-1 and we can play them in different areas and what he wanted to do he was like you, you've always got to understand that you're not always going to have your best team available so you have to work on 3-4-3 4-2-3-1 4-4-2 4 3 3 so he was like the understanding is we know how we play we know how we press we know when to press and it's understanding who we hit and, and you look for the weakest player in the team and then you go after one and it's that five, six, seven second press and starting to learn small mm-hmm. details and he hit us with the small stuff to start with and he started building us up and then it was like game knowledge, how you, how you win games, how you keep the ball, possession based club was huge but also attractive football at the same time, not boring, not slow. And he used to say in the first couple of months, he was like, I'll take all the hit. Hmm. He was like, my style, my style. I want you to go back, play with the goalie. I want you to play with the goalie. Yeah. Put his hand up, take all the flat. And it was like, right. Like, cool. It's leadership. Yeah, you, you start to get booed because every back pass, you go back, you come back out, you go out, you go up, you come in. And it's like, fans are like, boo. And then you're like, 1-0 up. And you're like, all right, yeah, yeah, this is all right. And you're like, 2-0 up. And then you're like, 3-0 up. And then you're 4-0 up. And it's circulating the ball, bringing it out of trouble, going down the other side, can't create anything, nobody's came out of space, nobody's overpressed, and it's can you find the pass? And as soon as somebody comes out of shape or is ill disciplined, it was like, kill it. Mm-hmm. It was like, go for it. Mm-hmm. So you would pull it somebody at an angle. If teams were man marking you, you would open up the middle of the pitch, you would play. It, it was, ideas were incredible. It was so far ahead of probably what we've ever had yeah. in Scotland and it showed the dominance that we had over the... And, and, and like the diligent people, you wrote all of this down, right? And, and you have it in notebooks that you're every using here. single part of it. Thank you, Uncle Brendan. <laughs> no, but... Do you, I mean, do you, you, well, clearly you've, you've given a brilliant description of just a little bit of, of his... No, kind that's, of that's what... So I, I speak to him and he was like, always remember. He was like, you remember what other coaches done, what you enjoyed, especially being a footballer. It was like, you remember things, but it's not Robbie Williams sessions. Yeah. It was like, you're not here to entertain yourself. And I was like, oh, I love that. <laughs> it was like, you're here to work hard. It was like, sometimes it's going to be boring, sometimes it's going to be hard. It was like, but this is going to make this team good. It was like, you're not coming here to play five sides. It was like those days, at the window, see you later. It was like, Every now and then, brilliant, we can go and have a wee five side comp, nice chill day, but we're here to work to make sure that you understand the game, the knowledge of the game. The physical aspects, working the gym, working your body fat, working everything. How are you in prime condition for Saturday, Thursday, Saturday, Wednesday, mm-hmm. Saturday, whenever you play? And it was just about us battling out result after result after result. And it's all this cliche in football, but we only ever talked about one game ahead of us. Mm-hmm. We never talked about winning leagues. We never talked about playing Rangers. Mm-hmm. We never talked about playing Aberdeen, Hearts, playing in cup finals. It was like, what we're talking about today, lads? Talking about playing Motherwell away, and everyone's like trying to talk to you, and you're talking to the press, and the press are going, You play Rangers in two weeks' time, so how do you feel about that? <laughs> and we'd be like, Yeah, so Motherwell's coming up, and it was always based on your next game. As it should you, be. Yeah. You're only as good as your next game. Yeah. The press all want to talk about yeah. the big games, the semi finals coming up, the cup finals, Champions League, whatever it was at the time. And he was like, He's all focused. He was like, You start talking about other things, you lose track of the next game ahead of you. And he used to batter you with that knowledge, who you're playing, who you're playing against, understand what their shape is. And it wasn't over killing videos, it was in training. This is how we're gonna break them down, this is how we're gonna break them down, and it just you battered into every single person. This is your position, you play off of him, he runs out there. And I was like, how do I write this one down after training? <laughs> uh, but for the crack, I, I, I went through some of the players that you would have played against in European competition for Celtic, right? Yep. And I drew up a team, right? Because <laughs> this is this is my life, and I just do these things, right? <laughs> so I have a goalkeeper of Buffon. Yep. Uh, Courtois and Van Zaar didn't didn't make it. Did they not make it? Did no, no, Buffon. Oh, right. uh, the fullbacks are Cafu and David Alba. 
Ooh. Uh, Danny Alves didn't quite. Danny Alves did the make yeah. it. Your centre halves Nesta and Benucci. It's not bad that. But it could have been Hummels, uh, Thiago Silva, Rio Ferdinand. The midfield three, and this is an attack. It's a four-three-three. It's an attacking. Uh, You're going for it. Really. I'm going for it. I'm Are you bringing a name here? Yeah, yeah. Because well, I fancy my chances are now. You fancy it? Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, about 50, so I've got you coming chance. off the bench for the last 10. <laughs> <laughs> so the midfield three is Perlo, Xavi and Iniesta. Yeah. And the front three is Neymar, Ronaldo and Messi. Mm. You played against all of those. Now, not in the team, Mbappe, Sterling, Giggs, Lewandowski, Aguero, Cavani, Suarez, Van Persie, Rooney, Thomas Muller, Di Maria, Robin, Kaka. That's, that was the life that you had. Yep. I enjoyed that. It was good fun. It must have been for you. Not getting you... a kick of the ball for 90 minutes was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but to play against that, I mean, are you the guy, type of guy to sit back and look back at, or are you kind of looking forward? Because, no. I mean, you had some great results against some of these teams, by the way, obviously. I had some great results, and to be fair, we had to dig deep because yeah. they were fantastic players. Yeah. Still the best one I've ever played against in the S now. Really? He just turned and ran at me, and I panicked. <laughs> and I thought the only way to stop him is to bring him down. And I, I had to end up bringing him down quite a lot. <laughs> Everyone say, I understand how good Messi, Ronaldo and that is, but my position was me against Iniesta, mm-hmm. and it was one for one. And him, people, even Pelo, Pelo was 34, 35 at the time, couldn't run, but could boy could move his hips, could keep the ball, move it, and it was all one paced, but nobody could take the ball off. It was incredible. So these players that were in my position, I appreciated more than anything. I, I was never one to go and run and get a strip to go and say to them, oh, can I swap strips We after the game, please, sir? And always look up to them and give them that little bit of respect. I, I wouldn't speak to them in turn, wouldn't speak to them after the game, wouldn't help them up, fill them on the floor, leave them. That was my way to try and get through the game in 90 minutes and show that I gave them no respect on the part. But as soon as I went off the park, I'd been fist pump and stuff that and it's just what I've done in football it's what I've always done and I kind of seen a lot of play we got beat 7 nothing once at Barcelona mm. and I remember it was 5 nil at half time or 4 nil at half time and then there was 4 or 5 of the lads running sprinting up the tunnel to try and get Messi's strip and I was losing my head and I'm looking and they're like oh but Messi Messi please strip 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 and I'm like oh. so I went in lost the plot at half time I ended up coming out and beat 7 now after all. Didn't really matter, but then at the end of the game, they, they done the exact same. And it, it's amazing because you look back and you think, I played against Messi, I played against Ronaldo, played against Iniesta and stuff like that. I never had the once to go and ask them for this shit, even though I wanted to. Yeah. But it, it just gave me that, this is my thing, and I don't want to go up to you and ask for your strip because you're not going to ask me for my strip. So until that happens, then that's not happening. And I didn't see Messi running down the tunnel to try and go, Bruni, Bruni, <laughs> can I swap strips with you, please? <laughs> so that was not happening. <laughs> so you, all those guys, you don't have any strips belonging to any of those guys? That I got to? one. Uh, Scotland played France, and we won one now. Uh, and I played against, it was me and Alan Hutton played right back, a joint venture at right back against Anelka and Maluda. Oh, yeah. And... Somehow, after the game, I uh, gave the kit man a strip and he was like, oh, do you want me to swap it with a... And I was like, aye. So like, he somehow swapped an Elka and I think Cubs maybe got my leader. So I got an Elka one and years after as well, I got a Pirlo one from... I don't know, I don't think it was a uh, Peon one from Barcelona. It wasn't a match worn one, but I think it was like his 17th strip that he came and gave the kit man and I swapped after the game, so... <laughs> But that, that's my claim to fame. <laughs> I so, could have had all these good strips on my wall. You were the fortune. Your kids, you know, your kids, when you know when your when your lads grow up, they go, for God's sake, where's all our kids? <laughs> could have made us a fortune here. <laughs> uh, look, fine, and finally, I mean, it, the Euros. Watching it doing TV work, did you did you have a pang of of regret? No. No. No, the lads. Uh, I had my time. I had my mm. show and. As I say, I'm not one to keep going on and keep going back and I'll get a chance, I'll get a chance. And I, I think if I was if I didn't retire when Steve first came in, I could have possibly still been in the squad playing. Probably not, because you see the, the midfield's very strong. Is, is Billy Gilmore the new Scott Brown? 
he's got a touch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you really want a Scott Brown in your team. I think now the way football's going, it's it's going. You want a Billy Graham in your team. You want a Callum McGregor. You want a John McGinn. My part in the game's kind of slowly fading away and football's becoming non-contact. You, you slowly touch somebody and they dive about the ground for 20 minutes and they get a foul, free kick and stuff like that. And my game's always been about winning balls, tackling, driving past an opponent and just trying to dominate more than anything and that's slowly fading out the game and it, it is getting better because it's more tempo, it's quicker and it's getting more attractive to watch them tail and old school fighting, kicking the ball long and I'm not one for everyone kicking the ball along, I'm, I want to play, I want to understand, I want to play football and mm. do what I want to do, but I'm not going to be going to beat half the team. Yeah. When you've got a McGinn that's going to put one in top corner for 30 yards, Cal McGregor's going to turn on the ball, going to be a man play, and you've got Bally who's just going to keep the ball and keep it at tempo and keep the ball moving. So you've got strength and depth in that Scotland squad that's probably the best Scotland squad in the last 20 years to have. And, mm. I, I, we played in the good Scotland squad, I had me, Fergie and Dan Fletcher in the middle of the park. Yeah. And we had legs, we, we just never got to the Euros. <laughs> so I, I'm a wee bit devastated that I never made it to the Euros, mm-hmm. but I'm also delighted for the, every single one of the lads. Mm-hmm. And the, good, good. The, that's the me to say, McGain, Gilmore's very exciting. McGain, you could have played, pretend well, if Celtic signed him again at Celtic, that could have been. It would have been a good partnership, eh? I could, he could have retired me early. <laughs>